After watching over a decade of youth soccer matches and seeing the same problems and mistakes occur every match, I created this video to help soccer players of all ages develop better all-around soccer skills. This video will show you how to do some of the most basic soccer skills up to the more advanced skills. What's important to remember is that even though these skills seem basic, they're the most common skills used by professional soccer players all around the world. To get that good, you must practice these skills on your own. This video shows you how to do these skills. The big key to your success is repetition, repetition, repetition. The next four moves will help you successfully change direction on even the best defenders. Don't be afraid to be creative and combine these moves to shake off your defender. I named the Zidane push move after the famous French attacking midfielder. This change of direction move uses the outside of your foot to cut the ball backwards, followed by a forward touch with the outside of the same foot. Always keep the ball close to your cutting foot. Remember to cut the ball early so you can get your body in front of your opponent, blocking them from getting the ball. For the cut push move, cut the ball quickly in front of you with the foot closest to the ball using the inside of your cutting foot. Push the ball with the outside of the opposite foot. Coaches named the Cruyff push move after the famous Dutch footballer. Plant your non-kicking foot well in front of the rolling ball. Act like you're going to kick the ball, but instead bring your kicking foot in front of the ball and cut the ball back with the inside of your kicking foot between your legs and backwards. push move is probably the quickest change of direction move. Stop the ball with the ball of your foot, flick it in front of you, and push the ball with the outside of the opposite foot. In this exercise, you're going to put all four change of direction moves together without stopping. Do each move four times. The key to doing highly effective change of direction moves is to do them super quick. The effectiveness comes from the element of surprise. Don't step backwards or hop back to gain your balance. Keep a low center of gravity and maintain your balance throughout the move. Explode in the opposite direction, giving yourself distance between you and your opponent. These moves were borrowed from Brendan Donahue and his Fast Footwork and Moves video on YouTube. I like these moves because they challenge your footwork technique, speed, and comfort on the ball. To do the L pull, roll the ball backwards while at the same time hopping forward with the opposite foot. Then tap the ball with your instep to the opposite foot. Reverse and get into a comfortable rhythm and increase your speed. Once you've mastered the L pull, add the push sideways to escape from your opponent. It's a terrific move to use against a defender because it doesn't expose the ball to your opponent 
yet it allows you to escape to the side and forward and race past your opponent. The T-Test is another fun Brendan Donahue exercise that combines pulling and pushing the ball with the L-Pull. Develop a rhythm, go slow at first, and then get progressively faster. The T-Test is a great exercise for developing comfort on the ball and for building confidence. When attacking your opponent's goal in the final third, don't get fancy. Just get some really quick feints and square cuts inside the 18. Quickness and keeping the ball glued to your feet are the secret weapons to being successful inside the penalty area. You may be watching this and think, this is too easy. However, these same moves are used by professional soccer players all around the world. The difference is professionals do them flawlessly and effortlessly from years of daily practice. The square cut is simply two inside cuts. The first cut takes the ball sideways. The second cut pushes the ball forward past your defender. It's great when attacking goal because it's simple, quick, and keeps you moving forward. Watch carefully. It's two steps only. There are no additional steps between the first and second cut. This one move is why Lionel Messi is so deadly in front of the opponent's net. When you get older and start playing 11v11 on the big pitch, you need a long, accurate kick for switching the field, hitting crosses, going direct over the midfield, and serving balls to teammates in front of the goal. To kick long balls successfully, learn to get under the ball correctly and follow through properly. Keep your backswing low, strike the underside of the ball, and end with your follow through on the ground. Think of chipping a wedge or a 9-iron in golf to understand how to get lift on your soccer ball. Check out Jared Montz's video on kicking high and far on YouTube. He does a great job of explaining how to hit the long ball. Knowing how to defend is critical. Stop running recklessly around the field chasing opponents who are easily passing the ball around you. All you're doing is racing around but never getting a foot on the ball you're starting to close too late, which means you're never ready to contain your opponent. And what makes things even worse, now you're completely exhausted and you've never touched the ball. Learn to close and contain properly. Being a great defender and winning tackles means that now you have the ball 
and you can start a counterattack or even sometimes be in a position to shoot and score. To close and contain effectively, you must sprint to the ball. Charge hard, rush in quickly to close any space the attacker might have. If you're sprinting hard to the opponent who has the ball, you must stop abruptly. The best way to do this is with a crow hop. Place one foot in front of the other and then do a quick low hop. Then get into your staggered defending position. With practice, you'll be able to perfect the crow hop and you'll find yourself getting into the containing position much quicker. Once your feet are set, you need to block your opponent's 1v1s or passes. A great exercise to work on blocking is to try to shadow block a partner. Use quick reflexes to mirror your partner's moves. Jockeying contains your opponent as they're attacking. You're shuffling backwards with your feet shoulder width apart and your feet in a staggered position. In this exercise, pass the ball to your opponent and close hard, then crow hop, and start to contain your opponent. Your goal is to shuffle backwards without them getting past you. The button hook is a football term and it works great for soccer defending. This is about making your recovery run. If you get beat, don't submit to defeat. Never quit defending. If the ball isn't in your goal, keep defending. If you get beat, make your recovery run and do the button hook. Turn and sprint as quickly as possible to get in front of your opponent again. This is called getting goal side. Repeat all the above steps to stop your opponent from crossing, shooting, or passing forward. Now let's put it all together. Pass the ball to your opponent, close hard, crow hop, contain aggressively, and make strong, solid blocks. Try to win back the ball as often as possible. When you're in front of your opponent's goal, you need great volleying skills to finish the job. A volley shot is kicking a ball that's in the air. If you're facing the goal, use a laces volley. If the ball is off to your side, use a side volley. To kick a laces volley, point your kicking foot down and lock your ankle. Let the ball drop knee level before lacing the ball into the goal. Get your head, shoulders, and especially your kicking knee over the ball. If you find your laces volleys are go going over the crossbar, you're leaning back. Get over the ball and you'll start hitting some laser shots into the netting. The key to shooting side volleys is to get your plant foot pointed toward the goal and then get your kicking knee and kicking foot level with the ball. Rotate your hips and swing the laces of your kicking foot into the back of the ball. If you have good flexibility, you can even strike down on the side volleys, sending balls into the low posts. Here's an exercise that's great for working on shooting. Set up eight balls in front of the goal. 
four at 10 yards and four at 15 yards and then run back and forth shooting in the goal. Finish the close 10 yard balls on the ground or low to the posts. On the 15 yard balls, turn with the ball and shoot quickly, preferably turning and shooting or one touch and shooting. Remember this close in, you'll probably only get a half chance, so shoot quickly. Imagine you have five to seven defenders in front of you and they're all trying to stop you. Know where the goal is and shoot with great urgency. You can't win soccer matches if you can't score. And you can't score if you don't practice shooting. A lot. I once heard a coach say, I don't need any more forwards that can't shoot and score. But that goes for midfielders and defenders too. Just check out the super famous German center back and World Cup champion Franz Beckenbauer on YouTube. Your first and second touch are the most important skills in your game. Settling a ball out of the air is crucial and that explosive directional touch after settling is the difference between possessing and not possessing the ball for your team. Any type of juggling helps your first and second touch tremendously. So after learning to solo juggle comfortably well, start partner juggling with a teammate or friend. Partner juggling helps you control a ball off a teammate's service, cross, or corner kick. Partner juggling is a really fun activity and is a great way to build camaraderie, improve possession and speed of play, and increase your air ball passing accuracy. Are you an impact player? Are you the difference maker in every match? Do you want to be? Then train on your own, a lot. The great USA men's national team striker and attacking midfielder Landon Donovan once said, developing superior skills are critical to your game, for without them, everything else is useless. That's why I made this video, to give you a roadmap to training on your own. Most of these skills can be done by yourself with just you and the ball. You'll see tremendous improvement in your overall game by spending 20 to 30 minutes on the ball every day. And by the way, team practices don't count for individual training. Team training sessions focus on team activities like possession, strategies, tactics, and finally small-sided games and scrimmaging. Coaches don't have time to focus solely on your individual soccer skills. There just isn't enough time in a 90 minute training session to work on your skills and everything else that needs to be covered when there's a group of 15 to 18 players on the field. This video is meant to give you ideas on how to train by yourself. It's super important to use your imagination and creativity when training by yourself. Train at game speed with the, your highest level of intensity. Pretend you're a pro with 50,000 fans cheering you on and recruiters are watching everything you do. See how many skills you can combine and still keep the ball moving. When training on your own, always practice with this in mind. What's next? Because in a match, pressure is immediate and opponents keep coming at you. Now what? Don't think that just one great move will shake an opponent. Great opponents are relentless and will keep pursuing you. Keep the ball tight to your feet and keep moving. Finally, never get down on yourself if you can't immediately get these skills. None of these skills are impossible to master. Embrace the struggle and eventually you'll find yourself being the difference maker, that impact player that you want to be. Now get out there and start training.